In this course, we will discuss the various types of open shortest path first OSPF, link stage advertisement (LSAs), and their meanings, as well as types of OSPF areas and their basic configurations. First, let's talk about the types and meanings of OSPF LSAs. This figure shows the position of an LSA in a packet. This slide shows common LSA types that we need to get familiar with. Each type of LSA has its own ID. For example, Type One LSAs are called Router LSAs, and Type Seven LSAs are called NSSA LSAs. Router LSAs describe the status of all the interfaces directly connected to each router that runs OSPF, interface IP addresses, and costs. Each router running OSPF generates router LSAs, and the router LSAs are flooded only in the area to which the router belongs. Type two LSAs are called network LSAs. They are generated by the designated router DR, and describe the router IDs of the DR and all routers connected to the DR. Network summary LSAs are generated by an ABR, in contrast to Type One and Type Two LSAs. Type Three LSAs. Describe network segment routes in an area and apply to scenarios with more than one OSPF area. By using network summary (LSAs), an ABR can implement route interworking between different areas by importing routes from one area to another. Type four LSAs are ASBR summary LSAs. They are host LSAs. Generated by an ABR and describe the ASBR. Type five LSAs are AS external LSAs. They are generated by an ASBR and describe external routes outside the local AS. Type seven LSAs are NSSA LSAs. They are generated by an ASBR. And are similar to Type Five LSAs in content, except that Type Seven LSAs exist only in not so stubby areas (NSSAs). Let's start with Type One LSAs. Type One LSAs are generated by each router that runs OSPF. If the interfaces of a router access the same area. The router generates only one Type One LSA, and the LSA is flooded through all the interfaces to the area. On the network shown in the figure, the router has two OSPF interfaces directly connected to the same area and floods a Type One LSA through the two interfaces. In this Type One LSA, in addition to the router ID. Each interface has a link field describing the interface IP address and cost. In some cases, interfaces may have more than one link field. Each router running OSPF generates Type One LSAs, and the Type One LSAs are flooded only in the area to which the router belongs. Type One LSAs. Identify whether a router is an area border router (ABR), autonomous system boundary router (ASBR), or virtual link endpoint. In summary, Type One LSAs have two functions: to describe status of directly connected interfaces and to identify whether the router has a special identity. Now, let's talk about. Type two LSAs. In the topology shown on this slide, OSPF neighbor relationships are established among routers R1, R2, and R3 through a switch. When interface A of R3 is manually set as a DR, 
R3 floods a Type 2 LSA in Area 0. This LSA contains the router IDs of all the routers and the IP address mask of interface A. Type 2 LSAs are generated by a DR and exist only on the network where a DR exists. Type 2 LSAs do not carry the cost field. Type 1 and Type 2 LSAs are flooded only within the local area. All routers can use Type 1 and Type 2 LSAs to calculate intra-area routes. On the network shown in the figure, all interfaces of R1, R2, and R3 are connected to Area 0. Each router receives Type 1 and Type 2 LSAs from the other two routers and adds them to its link state database, LSDB, to learn the topology of the area. To view the route information calculated by a router, you can run the display OSPF routing command in the system view of the router. Inter-area routes are transmitted through Type 3 LSAs. On the network shown in the figure, the ABR is connected to R1 and R2. The ABR learns the routes in the two areas through the Type 1 and Type 2 LSAs flooded in the two areas. Then, the ABR uses Type 3 LSAs to transmit the routes of one area to another area. Type 3 LSAs are generated by ABRs and are used to describe inter-area routes. Type 4 LSAs are also generated by ABRs and are used to describe an ASBR. On the network shown in this figure, the ABR and ASBR are both located in Area 1. The ASBR imports external routes to Area 1 and floods a Type 1 LSA in which the E bit is set to 1. Upon receipt of the LSA, the ABR identifies the ASBR. However, R3 is located in another area and cannot identify the ASBR through Type 1 or Type 2 LSAs. In this case, the ABR needs to flood an ASBR summary LSA to area 0 to describe the ASBR. Type 5 LSAs are generated by ASBRs and are used to describe external routes outside the local autonomous system, AS. On the network shown in this figure, there is an external route 1.1.1.0-24. Before the route is imported by the ASBR, the route cannot be learned by other routers in Area 1. After the ASBR imports the route to Area 1, the ASBR generates a Type 5 LSA that carries the network ID, mask, and cost of the route. In the routing tables of Huawei devices, the protocol field of the routes calculated based on Type 5 LSAs is OASE indicating that the routes are external routes. Type 5 LSAs have two cost types, Type 1 and Type 2. The cost type of each external route is either Type 1 or Type 2. The default type is Type 2. In the topology, after the ASBR adds the external route 10.1.1.0 to OSPF, it specifies type 2 as the cost type, sets the external cost to 1, and floods a type 5 LSA. Then, R1 and R2 use the type 5 LSA to calculate the external route, and the calculated cost of the route is its external cost. In this topology, if the ASBR specifies type 1 as the cost type when adding the external route, 10.1.1.0 to OSPF. The cost of the route to 10.1.1.0 
calculated by R2, based on the Type 5 LSA, is the external cost of the route 10.1.1.0 plus the cost of the route used by R2 to reach the ASBR. Type 7 LSAs are also used to describe external routes, but these LSAs exist only in NSSAs. In this topology, Area One is configured as an NSSA. After the ASBR imports an external route to the NSSA, it floods a Type Seven LSA rather than a Type Five LSA in the NSSA. When an ABR receives the Type Seven LSA, it translates it into a Type Five LSA and then floods the Type Five LSA in Area Zero. Similar to Type Five LSAs, Type Seven LSAs also have two cost types: Type One and Type Two. Now let's talk about OSPF errors. As shown in the figure, four routers are connected. Three errors zero, one, and two are planned. The external route four dot four dot four dot four slash thirty two. Is imported to OSPF. If area one is a comma area, in addition to type one and type two LSAs, type three, type four, and type five LSAs exist in area one. The type three LSAs describe routes of area zero and area two, and are imported by R two. The type four LSAs describe routes of R four and are imported by R two. The Type Five LSAs describe external routes and are imported by R4. In this topology, to keep R1 from learning external routes, set Area One as a stop area. In the stop area, the ABR prevents Type Four and Type Five LSAs from entering the stop area. In the stop area, R2 floods a Type Three LSA. Describing a default route to ensure network reachability, routers in the stop area cannot import external routes. If area one is set as a totally stop area, type three, type four, and type five LSAs cannot enter this area. In a totally stop area, the ABR of this area floods a type three LSA. Describing a default route to ensure network reachability. In this topology, area two is configured as a stop area, and some external routes are imported by R one. In this case, these routes cannot enter area two. If R four needs to import a small number of the external routes, set area two as an NSSA. If area two is configured as an NSSA, type four and type five LSAs cannot enter the NSSA, but routers in the NSSA can import external routes. These external routes are flooded in the NSSA through type seven LSAs. The ABR in the NSSA translates the type seven LSAs into type five LSAs. And then sends the Type Five LSAs to the backbone area, area zero. To keep Type Three LSAs from entering area two, set area two as a totally NSSA. In this case, the default route is described by a Type Three LSA. This slide describes the default route of an NSSA. This slide is a summary of OSPF area types. By default, an OSPF area is defined as a common area. Common areas include standard areas and the backbone area, area zero. Type four and type five LSAs cannot be flooded in the stop area, but type three LSAs from the backbone area can. In addition. The ABR of the stop area automatically delivers a default route through a Type Three LSA. 
Type 3, Type 4, and Type 5 LSAs cannot be flooded in a totally stubby area, and the ABR of the totally stubby area automatically delivers a default route through a Type 3 LSA. An NSSA does not allow Type 4 and Type 5 LSAs to be imported from the backbone area, but allows AS external routes to be imported. These external routes are flooded in the NSSA through Type 7 LSAs. The NSSA ABR delivers a default route through a Type 7 LSA. A totally NSSA does not allow Type 3, Type 4, and Type 5 LSAs to be imported from the backbone area. The ABR of the totally NSSA automatically delivers a default route through a Type 3 LSA, and a default route through a Type 7 LSA if the ABR has neighbors in full state in the backbone area. This table shows the types of LSAs that may exist in different types of OSPF areas. Now, let's talk about the basic configuration of special OSPF areas. In this topology, R1 resides in area 0, R2 resides in areas 0 and 1, and R3 resides in area 1. Area 1 is configured as a stop area. An external route is imported by R1. This slide shows key configurations on R2 and R3. All routers in the stop area need the stop area configuration. To set an area as stub area, configure the stub area attribute for all routers in the area. Otherwise, the OSPF neighbor relationship cannot be established. AS external routes cannot be flooded within the stub area. This slide shows key configurations of a totally stubby area on R2 and R3. It is required that the external route 3.3.3.0/24 be imported to the stop area, area 1. The imported route director route policy command cannot do this. In this case, you can set area 1 as NSSA by configuring NSSA on all routers in area 1. When a neighbor relationship between R2 and R1 reaches full, R2 automatically sends a default route through a Type 7 LSA to Area 1. If the ASBR R3 is required to deliver a default route through a Type 7 LSA, the NSSA default route advertise command must be run on R3 and the routing table of R3 must have a non-OSPF default route. That's all for today. Thanks for listening.